Beats family gather to weigh the gold from Monica's wash plant, their only moneymaker, a seasoned gold miner named Tommy Beats, sought success in the rough and tumble Klondike. His adventure was depicted in the most recent season of Gold Rush, which highlighted the difficulties and successes of Ponda Gold Mining. We watched Tony and his team traverse the difficult terrain from astute investments to unanticipated losses, come along as we examine Tidit's most recent mining endeavor, and discover the tenacity and fortitude that characterize Kondik legends Tony Beats. Makes a strong impression in this stunning Kondik region by skillfully developing a thorough and well-thought-out plan to increase the scope of his gold mining operations. His audacious 5,000-ounce extraction target sets the tone for his ambition and exemplifies his unwavering commitment to pushing the envelope in the pursuit of achievement. Tony seizes the chance presented by the current gold price top to transform this ambitious objective into a very successful business guaranteeing success, as well as a sizable million dual profit for himself and his devoted crew. Tony approaches the difficult terrains of cold cut and blue cut with preparation and resolve after methodically reducing the easier to reach. Pay dirt reservoirs of Paradise Hill even though this is a difficult terrain, there could be substantial rewards. Comparatively little at 650 oh, the first harvest foreshadows the buried richness. Tony seeks to uncover with his methodical and creative approach, the tree continues and the icy Klondike wind. Whispers tales of tenacity drive and the unwavering spirit that characterizes Tony Beats and his unwavering pursuit of Condit Gold Tony had owned a 25-ton kiwi wash plant but it had been left inactive and rusting away for the entire season. Tony put together his knowledgeable team and planned to Binion Creek events a small error made while traveling, prompted a prompt damage assessment and a comprehensive plan for repairing it. Tony's unwavering will to get gold from the ground inspired his group despite the transportation mishap they cooperated to lift and move the kiwi plant reducing any possible damage the team's resolve and unweaving devotion to success were evident as they were ready to start working on Shane's claim again. Demonstrating the resiliency that comes with striving for success, Mike was suddenly faced with unforeseen difficulties in a four-hour task that ought to have been simple and lucrative. The setback may have quadrupled the amount of time needed to do the work because of a broken chain, but Mike and the team knew that a big $300,000 bet was depending on this operation's success so it gave them the drive to get over the challenges even though the crew had prepared for a fuss. Execution things unexpectedly went wrong. When one of the shackles broke, Tony was shocked to see that there didn't seem to be any significant crash damage. When he looked about, the first objective was to stabilize the plant and carry out a comprehensive inspection for any possible problems. Mike asked Brandon Carr, the operator, to carefully flip the plant back over in order to help him get over the obstacle with skillful use of loaders and chains. They combined Tony's Tactical guidance with the lifting operation placing the plant in the middle of the road allowed for a full examination and potential realignment in the face of unforeseen difficulties. The team demonstrated tenacity and good cooperation at Nalig Ling that having the proper equipment may make overcoming problems easier when they elevated the plant. It proved that their efforts had paid off and that with the correct resources they could overcome unforeseen obstacles. After overcoming the difficulties they arrived at their goal, eight hours after departing from Paradise Hill a turning point was reached when the kiwi plant was introduced to Shane's Dominion Creek land because the plant was precisely positioned in its intended place Tony's instruction to clear the area once it was securely unloaded, produced a smooth transition. But there was another obstacle, a water pump. Malfunction necessitated a two-day postponement knee had been waiting on the assembly of a new 11-ton mega pump before going back to cleaning the 80 pup cut for rich white channel money. Their prospects of landing on profitable territory were hampered by the awful time. The cooperative effort needed to relocate the new pump to the fellow pond. 
demonstrated their knowledge and the vital importance of their specialized machinery Len and Mike was shown by Tommy, who was in charge of the operation how to raise and lower the pump. The crew's dependence on their tools showed how important they were to their mining operations they couldn't wait to turn on. The pump and resume cleaning, but something went wrong, Tony decided to try. Starting the engine with ever as a temporary fix, the crew persevered in the face of obstacles and challenges. The Paradise Hill Gold Rush demonstrates the tenacity needed in the volatile gold. Mining industry, Tony attempted a boost, using a pipe layer to enhance power. Because he was annoyed that the pump was not operating the team added more power, a starter in fresh air to the pump. By using Mike's suggestions, they spent several days being upset because despite their best efforts, the engine would not start Kevin, then decided to work with others to jump. Start the pump using the pipe level. Everything went perfectly even the engine's reaction relief spread as it became clear that the new pump was in better shape than the old one now that the pump was working again. Tony was looking forward to the gold mining, picking up again despite the small setback. The crew fast thinking and astute problem solving kept them on. Of course, the focus moved to reviewing the data and the group braced itself for what had transpired over the preceding four days. Data obtained after the gold was spilled showed a yield of $49,500 or $299.99. Oh, the season total was well over 3000 Oh, at this point, Tony highlighted the successful conclusion. Despite the obstacles and praised the team's efforts thanks to Mike's successful job, Tommy had more time. Therefore, they tried to increase royalties by renting out ground to the Winchester boys for the hunker cut the Winchesters had trouble in the very challenging mining area known as the Cursed Cut. The issue was the dense black sand which obstructed the gold recovery process by filling the riffles. Tony suggested changing from expanding methyl riffles to hydraulic ones in order to boost efficiency. The Winchester family needed to find a speedy solution to meet their 200-ounce season target mother. Nature presents the mining crew with obstacles that must be overcome in order to accomplish this massive goal which calls for a difficult and careful balancing act notwithstanding the inherent obstacles the team possesses a, a sizable workforce in addition to the equipment required to effect effectively oversee this demanding process, instilling a sense of urgency in his son. Mike Tony drives the pace with determination setting a strict deadline for fully stripping the cold cut and blue cut down to bedrock a crucial step in the intricate process of extracting. Gold Mike successfully removes two-thirds of the excess burden while exhibiting exceptional leadership qualities. He is currently pressed for time to remove the final third. He oversees the loading of overburden into rock trucks and manages one crew in the cold cut and another in the blue cut, he is a job balancing. Expert, however, there are immediate concerns due to rising temperatures and softer terrain, which puts the cars in a perilous position where they run the risk of becoming need to survive in. These hazardous situations, one must be strategic and cautious. Peter, who is new to the Yukon men environment, responds to these obstacles by demonstrating his skills by maneuvering a D6 tour with ease at the cold cut dump site. It is his responsibility to work the melted mud into a path that allows the rock trucks to pass the D6 experiences a mechanical failure that forces an emergency evacuation to a different disposal location that is half a mile away. Despite their best attempts, the methodical removal of overburden is delayed as a result of this move, which disrupts the previously established workflow under Tony's direction. A well-coordinated effort is made to fix the D6 mechanical issues and cautiously restore the track connection the crew 
successfully fixes the D6, enabling them to resume operations at the former dump site in spite of early setbacks they are able to reduce overburden more quickly because to this prompt resolution which puts them back on track to achieve their goals for gold extraction the cold cut and blue cut are effectively opened with fresh figure enabling a seamless back and fourth flow of activity the unexpected removal of the track from the d6 is only one of the team's many highs and lows but they persevere and the mining plant keeps operating smoothly, though falling 38 ahs short of the ambitious 5,000 o go the team's unwavering dedication yields a valuable haul of $318,000. This outcome shows their fortitude in the face of adversity and their aptitude for navigating the unpredictable world of Yukon gold mining. Parker has a daunting task ahead of him, and his team mined the entire claim in a single season even if doing so could result in financial loss in just two short weeks. This season is more intense than previous years because of the vast amount of ground that needs to be covered transporting operations across bourbon becomes a crucial strategy to traverse this challenging terrain. Parker's progress is hampered by a setback though as the super conveyor breaks down significantly delaying him. It will take an additional 200,000 yards of overbow and removal to reach the desired pay dirt. Parker looks at Tony's side to see where this additional material would be most useful given that they both have water permits and Tony still has some on his. Parker investigates the possibilities of cooperation, although it's a challenging scenario to dump dirt on a neighbor's property without permission Parker is realistic and willing to work things out. Now that most of the overbone from the cluster cut has been removed Tony's abandoned rights are boarded by the last barrier at the eastern edge in an attempt to expedite the process and make the toy deadline for losing Parker. Thinks about temporarily moving the remaining overburn onto Tommy's property. Parker introduces the plan stressing that in order to address their issues in the cluster cut, they must move over a 100 feet of the section and descend the pay the crew activates in the apparent urgency expecting to locate gold before. They anticipate efficient transportation of the items is the top priority at the moment even if Tony might not like it. Later as it moves dirt onto Tommy's land, Parker's excavator widens the line dividing Parker's and Tony's land. Creating anxiety, Tony discovers something surprising when he sees a large amount of dirt being moved onto his plot, although Tony is first annoyed. He chooses not to tackle the situation. Because of a predicament, Tony decides to honor the commitment because he values being a good neighbor even with the less favorable terms Parker and his Colleagues put in a lot of effort to move the heavy load in the final two hours. The mechanics and the rest of the crew put forth a lot of effort to meet the deadline the large 480 excavator must be deployed in order to move the overbed in. Effectively, Parker's excavator has a hitch as the timer approaches it loses. Track Parker is stuck with no track and a midnight deadline, so he makes a risky plunge, he uses a unique tactic to stay on his side of the line while staying inside the parameters of his claim. Navigating the 58-ton excavator into his side of the line just in time the race against the clock comes dangerously close underscoring the high stakes associated with their mining operations. Each problem that arises is carefully handled by the team demonstrating their Commitment to overcoming challenges. Despite early setbacks, their cooperative attempt to hone methods and make use of additional tools shows a problem solving mindset as he manages the intricate workings of the enterprise. Tommy's leadership is evident, his ability to make wise decisions and hands on approach contribute to the team's success. 
the group's diverse skill set, which includes anything from operating winches to moving heavy machinery, guarantees a comprehensive and proactive approach to problem-solving the narrative delves into the challenges of managing machinery in various environments, including soft sand and shifting riverbank dynamics. The group's tenacity is evident and perfectly captures the spirit of their regular mining operations. The story illustrates how their working environment is always changing as the operation goes on the weather unforeseen difficulties and the need for ongoing adjustments emphasize how unpredictable their mining endeavor is even if the snow makes things more difficult the team is still committed to making it work precise details are added to the story to enhance it such monica kevin and the team's collaboration the team's unity and the accuracy needed for these tasks are demonstrated by the cooperation needed for tasks like shifting the barge across and positioning it in the water tony's viewpoint and decision-making process are included to give the story a human touch and let the audience relate to the team's successes and setbacks. The narrative is made more credible by the focus on safety precautions, efficient communication and modifying plans in response to immediate input, essentially. The extended narrative illustrates the multifaceted nature of the team's efforts encompassing both tactical echo, planning and practical execution all set against the ever-changing backdrop of meteorological and climate circumstances. It provides a comprehensive account of the group's daily struggles and successes turning their mining expedition into a captivating story of resiliency and adaptability. There is a collective sigh of relief from the Paradise Hill Mining crew when the troll begins its rhythmic work. The mechanical rebirth is more than simply equipment restoration. It's a fresh revenue stream and Tony and the crew lifesaver, the lengthy outage cost money as there was a substantial loss of potential gold worth approximately $200,000. This puts more pressure on the market to bounce back soon and meet the challenging 4,500-ounce season target. The narrative delves further into the challenges of maintaining older equipment in the hard-charging gold mining industry. Tony's pragmatic choice to give maintenance top priority in spite of the associated expenses and schedule. Constraints highlights the fine balance that must be struck between the necessities for maintaining the mining Ventures' long-term profitability and its urgent operating demands the group has an unquestionable sense of perseverance and camaraderie in the face of adversity. Their capacity to adapt and be resourceful is demonstrated by the unforeseen repair of the clever gear switch which turned obstacles into a chance for original problem-solving. Their shared struggles act as a catalyst, forming a cohesive unit that not only endures the flourishes in the volatile world of mining reassembling the 30 feet. Conveyor signifies more than just a technical task, it also signifies a resurgence of enthusiasm for the enterprise, the triumphant resuscitation of the troll is a testament to the crew. Unwavering commitment showcasing their ability to surmount obstacles and symbolizing the unwavering determination necessary in the ceaseless quest for gold. The Paradise Hill team perseveres, despite the unknown void by hopes of achieving their seasoned goal and overcoming financial setbacks. The narrative portrays not only the technical features of a gold mine, but also the human qualities of tenacity, cooperation, and an unyielding desire to survive in a challenging and unpredictably changing environment, Tony. Beats is motivated by a potent mix of huge money and ambition in his search for Condit Gold with equipment valued at an astounding $5 million. He believes that this season will mark the start of his biggest gold harvest in more than 40 years. His astute maneuver in the battle for crucial land allows Tony to profit from the present gold prices igniting his hope for what he perceives to be his most prosperous season to date, Tony.
intends to use a larger ship and three times more iron to extract 9,000 ounces of gold even with the equipment purchase and repayments he is still optimistic that this substantial investment would yield returns above the ambitious 9,000 ounce goal Tony's well thought out wager not only fosters excitement and expectation but also optimism Tony Emplo. Water MERS, a tried and true method of effectively washing away soft dirt to expedite the mining process, this tactic not only makes the operation more joyful and cohesive, but it also works well. But when the frol lever on the engine comes off, it lowers water pressure and impedes mining efficiency, causing a disruption. In the mining process, Tony demonstrates incredible creativity by using a few zip ties to fix the frol grip in an easy to understand yet clever way this improvement revitalizes the company and exemplifies the resilience needed in the challenging gold mining sector tony declared the crew audacious season long objective 5000 of gold during the festivities even with an initial yield of 828 from two sizable cuts on paradise hill tony acknowledged that additional Dirt from certain regions required. Treatment Tony gave Lizer and James permission to come their cars and move P. There is time was running short knowing. That time was of the essence he underscored the significance of grasping any chance to extract wealth, even if it required judicious risks. Eric E. Julia was entrusted with controlling trash sailings in the interim to prevent them from building up close to the trails. And, but Eric's e-excavator became stuck, resulting in a lot of issues and stacking tailings, seeing the urgency. Tony gave Mike the task of coming up with a solution the issues continued, even after hydraulic fluid leak from the 460 necessitating a lengthy shutdown. Kevin was called in to look into the problem and found that the missing O-ring was the root of the proof that season portrayed the highs and lows of the gold mining industry from the fur of finding a big gold find to the difficulties of repairing complicated gear the beats resilience and perseverance paid off, highlighting how erratic their project was as the season draws to a close Tony starts thinking about repairs and preparations for the future the story ends with Mike and Kevin reflecting on their first year as leaders and expressing satisfaction with the crew's performance, the financial success acts as a buffer and spark, amusing conversations about how they spend the substantial profits, including a lighthearted remark about a trick to Mexico. The choice to visit Mexico is a well-earned to diversion from the harsh Klondike weather every season is a dynamic experience full of obstacles, successes, and the possibility of new opportunities in the world of gold. Mining the beat's journey serves as a blueprint for the tenacity needed to find Kundek gold preparing them for whatever challenges and successes the upcoming season may provide for more material like to this. Don't forget to follow us and hit the subscribe button.